familia. Oh boy. We're going to resume the meeting of May 18th, 2020. Uh, Councilmember Lenore, will you uh, please lead us in the pledge? Yes. Allegiance. Ready, salute. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. America. Thank you, Carol. You're welcome. All right, roll call, please. Councilmember Zendez. Present. Vice Mayor Spencer. Present. Mayor Velasquez. Here. Councilmember Lenore. Present. Interim City Manager Miller. Here. City Attorney Epperson. Present. Interim Chief of Police Reynoso. Here. Thank you. The agenda for the City of Hollister City Council regular meeting of May 18th, 2020 was posted on the bulletin board on May 13th, 2020 at 11 a.m. per Government Code Section 54954.2. Thank you very much. City Attorney, will you please report out from closed session? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The closed session report is that the City Council discussing closed session, that item agendized for closed session discussion as I read prior to moving into closed session, and direction was given to staff. The City Council adjourned from closed session at 6.25 p.m. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna move to the consent agenda. Are there any items any council member would like to pull from the consent agenda? Before that, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to say that I have a conflict with item A3. If there's discussion, I'll recuse myself from discussion, and I will recuse myself from voting item A3. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there any... Yeah. Go ahead. Ignacio, I am also going to recuse myself from A3. Uh, okay. I do not want to have a conflict with this. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there any items from the public? I have no items to be pulled from the public, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. Is there a motion? Um, if they recuse, we just make the motion between me and you, Ignacio? Uh, you, you can make the motion for those items, and then they will not be voted on item A3. So, so you make, and I would be the only one voting on that. Okay, so I, may, uh, I move that we approve the consent agenda excluding A3. Actually, is there a second? Well, no, you don't have to exclude eight three. Oh, uh, oh, what what I do wrong? You you just want to uh, okay. Uh, I move that we approve, approve the consent agenda Perfect. as presented. Yeah. Yeah. And since um, I'll go ahead and second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And Mr. Yeah, Mayor, I would three would have two votes on it. That's correct, Mr. Mayor, and because there, were, there was not a majority of the city council voting on item three, that's essentially, that, that is non-action on item A3. The remainder of the consent okay. calendar was approved. Thank you. Okay, then Thank how you, are we gonna sir. deal with that? Okay, at this time we're gonna move to public input. This is the time for anyone in the audience to speak on any item not on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. Speaker cards are available in the lobby and are to be completed and given to the city clerk before speaking. When city clerk calls your name, please come to the podium, state your name and city for the record, and speak to the city council. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes with a maximum of 30 minutes per subject. Please note that state law prohibits the city council from discussing or taking action on any item not on the agenda. Do we have any speakers? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Our first speaker is Sam Humphrey. Good 
Mayor Velasquez and members of the City Council, thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Sam Humphrey and I'm the plant manager at San Benito Foods located at 110 Hawkins Street, Hollister, California. As you probably know, San Benito Foods operates its Hollister processing plant year round. The company has been located in the city of Hollister since 1937. We employ 90 people a year, year round full time and 445 people seasonally from July to October of each year. Those jobs support an additional 230 year round full time jobs and 1,120 seasonal jobs in the local economy. The net effect on the local economy is $25.85 million in direct and indirect household income. When combined with the direct and indirect benefits derived from the sale of goods from San Benito Foods, the total impact of our company on the local economy exceeds $238 million. Our employees live in the community, they shop at local stores, their children attend local schools, and they and their family members actively participate in all levels of community activities, including voting. The company has recently invested $1.4 million in capital improvements to ensure its presence in the community into the future. As a designated member of the nation's strategic food supply chain, San Benito Foods has every intention to remain in Hollister for the long haul. All of our employees are designated as essential workers by various government orders issued during the COVID-19 crisis. In short, we consider our company as a very important part of the local community and its economy. Recently, we have been in, engaged in discussions with some of your local staff representatives and consultants regarding the reissuance, reissuance of our annual operating permit. Unlike in prior years, the discussions this time around have been extremely difficult. Demands have been made of our company to pay millions of dollars for projects completely unrelated to our operations and on very short notice. In even the best of economic circumstances, such demands would be difficult to meet. In the current economy where our sales are off as much as 50%, such demands are impossible to meet, even if we conceded that demands had any merit, which we do not. Because these discussions regarding our annual operating permit have been so difficult, we have repeatedly asked to meet with the highest level of city representatives to engage in face-to-face -face discussions of the city's issues and San Benito Foods issues. Those requests have been uniformly rejected. I am here this evening to re renew those requests. On behalf of San Benito Foods, I ask each and every one of you to de de designate a city council member the city manager, the public works director, you, the city attorney, in short, decision makers to meet with us to discuss our mutual concerns, our mutual plans Thank related you. to our respective operations, and to develop an economic model that makes sense for both us in light of the current state and local statewide Thank economy. You, you can reach me at any time, any time at the plant offices located on Hawkins Street. Your staff people have my telephone number and Thank email address. Thank you for your time and consideration Very again, Mr. Mayor. Information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Humphrey. At this time, if there's anyone on the teleconference that would like to make a public comment, please raise your hand, or if you're on the phone, hit star asterisk. We have no more public comments, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. We're going to move oh. to... Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. We do have one more. Elia Salinas. Good afternoon, everyone, and good evening. Um, <clears throat> I'm requesting that the council please bring back to for a discussion with regards to the contract uh, we, we have with Recology. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have spoken to different different councils, and I've gotten getting different opinions. I've got an opinion from the city, which is that um, the Prop 218 is for the uh, property owners to object or to protest for the rate increase i've got an opinion legal opinion saying that it is the legal right of the rate payer to object to the rate increase and i think it's very important that we get an answer we're running out of time and uh, there's such such a mix-up and such a misunderstanding that 
Um, I don't know what's going to happen when the deadline comes and we don't get enough protest because the misunderstanding that you must be a property owner, I'm putting it out there, just be a ratepayer. it doesn't matter, you don't have to be the property owner. So we need a legal opinion and it's really important. I'd like to request that the future and very soon, even if it has to be a special meeting, we need an answer because we're running out of time on the protest. Thank you. Thank you. I have no more speakers. No more speakers, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. We'll go to item D1. City Manager. Nothing to report at this time. D2. With COVID-19 right now, uh, nothing to report. All right, we're going to move to item F1. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have staff talk on it. We're just trying to get staff up. I'm on now. All right, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council members. Um, item F1 is the plan specs for the fire uh, suppression system out of the domestic wastewater treatment plant. At this time, I'm requesting to withdraw this item. Okay, thank you. Do we need a motion on that, City Attorney? Yes, Mr. Mr. Uh, vote on that or was this withdrawn? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yes, if we could have a motion on it, please. Okay, is there a motion? Oh, any speaker cards first? I have no speaker cards, Mr. Mayor. Is there a motion to withdraw this item? I'll move that we withdraw resolution number 2020-185. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion carries. We'll move to item F2. Good evening. Um, item F2 is a permission to apply $30,000 in grant money from the FAA as part of the COVID-19 federal relief package. Um, they're providing some money for every airport in the country, and that is the amount they that we are eligible for. So there are no required for this grant and this grant will be used to offset some operational costs this uh, physical year not this fiscal year but um, after January 1 2020 okay thank you any questions no no okay do we have any speaker cards I have no speaker cards mr. mayor is there a motion I make a motion that we accept resolution 2020-96 there's a motion, is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Mayor. Motion, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye, all right, motion, we'll, we'll move to item F3. Good evening, Mayor. I'll hold the fire. Uh, resolution uh, 2020-97 is uh, an opportunity from the uh, Department of Homeland Security um, supported by FEMA for local fire departments to um, pre-plan pandemic. They're allowing us to uh, provide us a funding source in the way of a grant. Um, and this is a, a, a grant application that we're requesting to uh, be permitted to provide. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions from council? No. Do we no. have any speaker cards? I have no speaker cards, Mr. Mayor. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we accept 20, 20, 97. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? I will second that, Mr. Mayor. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Our motion carries. We'll move to item F4. Thanks, Chief. You're welcome. Um, F, F4 is uh, resolution 2090, uh, 20, 20, 98. This is the annual assistance to firefighters grant that provides uh, local jurisdiction fire departments to enhance uh, service in the form of fire prevention. This year, we are trying to allocate funding through the grant with no matching costs mm -hmm. in order to uh, provide a fire simulation trailer that we can utilize for training for seniors and um, events when we can start having events again, 
like Kids in the Park and um, uh, educational forums as such. Uh, whenever the, the Department of Homeland Security and provide for um, funding sources like that, it, it's our responsibility to try to take advantage of everything they have. Thank you. Is there any, qu any questions from council? No. Do we have any speaker cards? I have no speaker cards, Mr. Mayor. Is there a motion? Um, wait, wait, wait. I have one person who wants to, what, I'm sorry, hold up. I have one person who wants to speak. Um, um, well, let me get the second and then we'll go back to the speaker. Thank you. Is there a second? Oh, we'll second that, Mr. Mayor. There's a motion second and it will go back to the speaker. Uh, Battalion Chief Badola. Starting. No, I was going to just comment if you have any questions. I was just preparing for the next one also. Thank you very much. Aye. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We'll move on to item F5. Who made the motion? Who made the second? Honor and roll in second. Okay, F5. That, that's just an adjustment in the contract with our uh, our contracted. Um, we, um, uh, uh, Long's Custom Disking Service, there was some uh, discrepancy, so we just had to match up the contract with the RFP to make sure they, that they're correct. So they just had to do some adjustments. Uh, and that was the office personnel and finance. Okay, is there any questions? Do we have any speaker cards? I have no speaker cards, Mr. Mayor. Is that enough? No speaker cards, Mr. Mayor. All right, is there a motion? I'll move the I motion. make a motion oh. that we accept 20, 20, 99. Is a motion? Is there a second? I'll second. Aye. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't care. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll matter. move to item F6. I'll delete. Uh, good evening, Council. Can you hear me? This is Jamila Sacco with Development Services. Yes, we can. Okay, great. This is my first time doing it through a webinar, so thank you. I'm just here to present the local early action planning grant. Uh, this is a resolution to apply for one-time grant funding that will be directed towards our development services uh, department. And specifically, we're looking to use the funding to um, assist with our next round of our housing element, which is part of our general plan. So I'm just seeing if there are any questions or any concerns regarding our, uh, the direction to use the grant money. Okay, is there any questions from council? No. Do we have any speaker cards? I have no speaker cards, Mr. Mayor. Is there a motion? I move that we adopt resolution number 2020-100 authorizing application for and receipt of local government planning support grant program funds. And the motion, is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Motion carries. We're going to move to item G1, reports from city council members regarding their committees. Council member Lenore. Okay. Um, I, I have one. Uh, we met uh, uh, last week and we Zoomed the meeting for AMBAG. Uh, it was a good meeting. Uh, and, and I think that uh, probably the mayor and um, uh, and Roland are already up to date on, on the COG thing. I'm waiting to uh, hopefully see the numbers for the, and I can never remember, is it de-aggravation? Uh, uh, I want, I'm curious to see what the numbers are uh, through our local COG office. Uh, but we did approve over there um, uh, the, the, the uh, document over there. But it doesn't do ours over here. So that's where we're at. And um, and I look forward to the next meeting and uh, AAA, I uh, believe, um, uh, I missed that meeting or they didn't have it. I just can't remember. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Vice Mayor Spencer. Um, I have nothing to report. Thank you, Council Member Resendez. Nothing to report. I don't have anything to report either, so we'll move to item G2 informational reports from City Council. Um, Council Member Lenore. Okay, give me just a second here. I'm sorry. Uh, 2020. Let's go back to May. Get in there. 
Let's see. I'm just. I should have already looked. Okay. Uh, so we had the end. Uh, uh, had a meeting. Uh, had a meeting Friday with a downtown business owner, uh, city manager, and I uh, met with the garden shop. Uh, it was a good meeting, um, and that's all the meetings I had since the last meeting. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor Spencer. Um, I've had no meetings. I have had several emails from uh, local small businesses about our decision on. Friday, May 15th, and I will be responding to every email. And that's it. Great. Thank you. Councilmember Resendez? Nothing to report. Thank you. I don't have any report at this time. So, uh, City Manager? Uh, nothing to report at this time other than thanking staff for their continued work. Thank you. City Attorney? No report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Chief. Um, Mr. Mayor, the only thing I want to uh, report is that earlier today we re did a press release in regards to sex registrants and the executive order by the governor allowing agencies to continue to conduct the sex registration for uh, convicted sex offenders remotely. And uh, the press release that was released is advising the public that the Hollister Police Department will, despite the order, will continue to uh, provide the registration of sex offenders um, the way we have been in person. I think that uh, our facility allows us to do it safely with the barrier in place and there's no need to do that remotely and we will, um, we take uh, very seriously that responsibility to continue to provide that service and we're advising all registrants to continue to register as, as before um, on, an, on their anniversary date. So that's all. Thank you. City Clerk? I have nothing to report. All right, thank you very much. We're gonna move to item G3. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, good evening. Abraham Prado with the City of Hollister Development Services Department, Planning Division, Planning Manager. At its regular meeting of January 23rd, 2020, the City of Hollister Planning Commission approved amendments to an existing vesting tentative map, number 2018-4, which subdivided three parcels consisting of a total area of 207.65 acres into 60 lots in the Airport Support and Industrial Business Park area of, this, uh, of the City of Hollister, located near the Hollister Airport, west of San Felipe Road, approximately half a mile to the north of the intersection with Fallon Road. A request to appeal the action of the Planning Commission was submitted within 15 days uh, of, the, of the approval by the Planning Commission. And if you recall, staff scheduled an item to set the appeal hearing at a regular City Council meeting of March 16th, 2020. After the item was presented by staff, the Council's consensus was to postpone this item in light of the COVID-19 emergency. Staff is returning today requesting the City Council in the form of a consensus is set an appeal hearing for this item for the regular City Council meeting of June 1st, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter may be heard if it is the desire of the City Council. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, is there any questions from Council? None for me. None for me. Do we have any speaker cards? I have no speaker cards, Mr. Mayor. Okay, is there a consensus to uh, set the date for the June 1st council meeting? Yes. 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 Okay. All right, everyone. Consensus. Granted. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move to item G4. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. Good evening once again. It, this is Abraham, Planning Manager with the Development Services Planning Department. At it's, we want to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to provide an update on the progress made on the general plan. As you are aware, at its regular meeting of April 6, 2020, the City Council adopted resolution number 2020-64, canceling all ad hoc committees in response to the State of California Executive Order and 2520 COVID-19, with the exception of the Disaster Council as needed, and also except for the General Plan Advisory Committee for the GPAC. Since the Council's selection of PlaceWorks, Inc. 
as the consultant for the general plan update, staff has met with the consultant approximately on a weekly basis, um, if not more. There's some weeks that we meet multiple times, and I just want to say that they've been really great to work with. Staff has been really happy with our collaboration. As you know, the general plan document requires a high level of public participation. The general plan document is a document for the community, by the community, and it will provide the vision for our precious community for the next 20 years or so. And by working together in this process of the update of the general plan along with our stakeholders, we look forward to crafting good policy and implementation measures to memorialize in the general plan document in order to implement the vision and goals of the community throughout the life of the document. Staff would like to inform you and the community this, this evening that a website has been prepared and it's ready to be launched this week exclusively for the general plan update. And it will have information both in English and in Spanish. Staff has been working diligently to translate um, all the information into Spanish. The goal of the website is to reach out to the community and inform the public about meetings, of, for example, future GPAC meetings, planning commission meetings, city council meetings that um, have anything to do with the update of the general plan, and also provide progress reports and updates of the general plan and request the public participation, such as in the form of surveys, and also provide the opportunity for the public to comment and submit questions. There is a draft press release that is ready to be sent out in English and in Spanish this week. We wanted to come uh, here tonight and inform that and inform the council about this before we send out um, the press release to the public and it should be ready for the public participation this week. We, we've also been working with the consultants, traffic, traffic engineers, as well as with the city engineer and staff and selecting um, intersections throughout the city of Hollister to be analyzed for level of service, along with current impacts and potential future impacts, which can, which can give us da data to see what type of policy and implementation measures the council can adopt for ultimate roadway Im network improvements within the general plan update. At its regular city council meeting of February 5th, 2018, the city council unanimously adopted resolution number 2018-27 approving the GPAC framework with two city council members, two planning commissioners, and one member at large who is a resident of the city of Hollister. At its regular meeting of the city council of April 20th, 2020, last month, during item number F5, concerns were brought up by members of the city council regarding the formation of the GPAC, and suggestions were brought up by some of the council members on possibly changing the framework of the GPAC. In a subsequent meeting that staff had with the city attorney, the city attorney informed staff that any changes to the framework of the GPAC can be made by a majority vote of the council. However, as it stands now, the current GPAC is considered to be established with three active members and two vacancies. Due to the approval of resolution number 2020-64 mentioned earlier, canceling all ad hoc committees except for the disaster council as needed and except for the GPAC, Staff has been coordinated with, with uh, coordinating with PlaceWorks and GPAC members to establish the first GPAC meeting for June 4th, 2020 at 6 p.m. at the council chambers via Zoom. Before sta staff sends out the agenda and Zoom invitation to the community and stakeholders, staff wanted to make sure that the entire council was informed of this meeting. The GPAC serves as a recommending body to the city council and as indicated previously, the ultimate decision-making body of the general plan is the city council. This concludes the report. I would be glad to answer any questions. If there are any legal specific questions in regards to the GPAC, those should likely be directed to Jason. Staff would appreciate um, Jason's assistance, but we would be happy to answer any questions um, that you may have tonight. Thank you very much. Is there any questions from council? Yes. Yes, I have a question. Go ahead. Okay, how can we have a GPAC uh, committee meeting when we don't have a GPAC? We have two people on the GPAC. Three. Um, it's, a mem it's a commission of five. We do not have five, so there is no GPAC committee. We, we have three. 
Okay. Right. David, you boy. I have a question. I do too. More of a comment. Okay, Councilmember Resendez, uh, I just want to say thank you, Abraham, for your very informative report. And if you can please send out that website to everybody, I'd like to see that as soon as it's ready to go live. Thank you. Well, do. Yes, you're welcome. I have a question, Mayor. Councilmember Lenore. I want to know about the GPAC meetings. They're open to the public? My understanding is that the GPAC meetings will be open to the public to be coming in here at a limited basis okay. um, and um, also through Zoom. Zoom. Okay. That's so correct. Because there's already two members, I'll direct this to the city attorney, because there's already two members on the GPAC, I can't be involved, right? Uh, Council Member Lenore, any time that As there's a citizen, a citizen, let me finish that. As oh, a citizen, I understood because I lose all my say, uh, and that's an important item to me. And since I'm not involved in it, then what do I get to say anything? Y well, I, I can't say anything here that would constitute legal advice. Okay. We could discuss that later. Okay. However, in general, I can tell you anytime there's a, a third member of a, of a okay. city council at a meeting like that, yeah. Um, uh, under most circumstances, yeah. observation is okay. fine. Commentary would in, would involve okay. uh, communication between the three. I just wondered if I could do it as a private citizen, just because I am interested in that stuff. I've always have been, mm -hmm. but now I kind of can't say anything, and it's just from a planning perspective. But I I lost some rights when I came on here. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Abraham, I just want to say thank you also for all the work all of you yeah. have been doing, and I look forward to the meeting. Do we have any speaker cards on yeah. the side? Wait, I have yes, one more Mr. question, Mayor. please. One more question. How will we Go fill? Ahead. How will we fill the other two slots? What are we doing? Is that an appropriate well, discussion or no? Not right now. I, what are we going to do about the two empty seats? Well, the the two people that were, uh, I mean, the applications are still there. If you, if you guys want to appoint the two people that. Oh, we were going to go back out for the public they, member. They be on there. So we got to go back and vote to put them on there. We were going to go back out to advertising. No. Oh, we're not. No, that no, didn't the, pass. The two people that, that didn't were pass. there before. If you guys So that's all that, that's all we get to that was good. It's not oh. you know, the we, two we, seats we, stay empty. What what? The new council. Oh. Okay, then I'll be able to talk okay. next year. Good good luck for you guys. <laughs> Is that <laughs> is that a legal ruling? No, I'm saying if you wanted to go back and discuss the two applicants from the past, then we could go back and vote on that. Well, I think we need to open up the um, the uh, uh, member at large, the uh, community member, to more than just one applicant. Well, there, there was more than one applicant at the time when they first requested information. Yeah, it, it was Marty Richman and it was somebody else who both withdrew. What's so excellent. we only actually had one applicant. We and he, okay, well, that's... Open it. Yeah. I, I, I would just say we are we are getting we're agendized for receiving right. the report. I'm I'm, I'm so concerned that we you. might be getting a little yeah. too close to year. discussion. Yeah. Certainly, it could be uh, um, agendized for discussion at a at a different meeting in the well, future. We did if that's the council. That already, remember? And uh, Mr. Mayor, I do have one public comment. Okay. On this item, Elia Salinas. Good evening. With all due respect to our city attorney, Jason Epperson, I believe that uh, if there's a, it's the way it is interpreted, the GPAC that was passed and approved in February of 2018 was specifically written so that the members were voted by the city council members. It was specifically written that if the mayor were to be appointed, the mayor is not in charge and is not the chair of the entire committee and does not make all the decisions. That is why we are where we are today, speaking of why we want more public input, we should request that each council member appoint a public member from their district to be onto this uh, GPAC committee. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, Council Member Lenore, who actually has more than anybody up there on the dais, has more experience and in, in information with regards 
to what is going on in the city with because she was a planning commissioner. She's the most qualified to be running this GPAC to begin with. Unfortunately, she does has decided that she's not going to run for the position and she will be uh, be making the meetings. But in the meantime, we don't have a GPAC. When we last left this meeting, we did not have a GPAC. There was a mis there was there's misinformation given by legal counsel, and we have other people giving out input information. And what we have here is we have you, Mayor, taking charge when you do not have the authority to take charge of this GPAC. This is a committee for the people, and it is by the people, and you are not the chair of this committee, therefore there does not exist a GPAC until we get it fully staffed by members of the community, the planning commission, the, 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 board, the uh, uh, council members, and public input. Uh, what you have right now is you have, you have Councilman Resendez and you have uh, Mayor Ignacio Velasquez. You are both against growth in this city. You are, how can we have a GPAC committee that is diverse in all types of opinions to see what is in the best interest of the city when we have two of you who don't want any growth whatsoever? So we, we need to bring this item back. I don't think there should be any hearings on this, uh, any meetings with this. And actually, when we come back, what I would like to request as well is I'd like one of the council members to please have a report by PlaceWorks. I'd like to see how much money has, it has already cost the city to have GWorks play, uh, working on this and having meetings in th uh, with the regards to the GPAC. Thank you. I have no more speakers, Mr. Mayor. Your, uh, your comments are incorrect and again, leads to more confusion, so thank you very much. Do we have any speakers, other speakers? No, no they don't. No more, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you, Abraham. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're going to move to item HIJK. There is no business. And I would request that we can, the council would be willing to adjourn the meeting in memory of Faith Wright, who did pass away, unfortunately, um, the other week. Um, the little girl, poor girl, that did drown in her pool. So we can adjourn in her memories. That'd be all right with the council? Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you. Is the motion? Is there a second? Second. Motion, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you all. Just so you, just so you all know, I gave that second to Carol. Just one. Yeah. You've been, you've been trying to get in there. I'll <laughs>